my roll of Foma pan has been shot and it's in a little can and I put it in here just so I don't lose it. It's going to be processed in the larger spiral tank that holds 50 feet or 15 meters because I loaded the film in the dark and I flipped it over in the dark and took it out in the dark. So I get an extra 6 or 10 feet when I develop it and I need the extra room that's in this tank. Alright, so I'm going to process this film according to the Fomapan text sheet. It calls for the first developer to use Fomadon LQR in a ratio of 1 to 10. This is the bottle of Fomadon LQR. It also says 1 to 10. I want to use 1200 milliliters at least in here. One liter was used on the first roll and it covered the spiral but I want more to cover the spiral. I think the development was uneven. The last time I did it I used 1400 milliliters. I used up the kit chemicals. So I will put the Fomadon in here. This is the 125 milliliter mark. So just short of that. And I will mix it in here with 1200 milliliters of water. Well, that's going to be a little more. It's going to be 1,200 plus 120, but that's all right. Then I'll develop, and I'll pour it back into this one, and I'll save it in here for the second development. This holds 2 liters somewhere over this line. Up here near the top, it holds 2 liters, so it'll fit. Here's another thing. This tank doesn't accept liquid through the top very comfortably. It forms a bubble or something which blocks the inflow of the liquid. When you pour liquid in here, it gets clogged and it won't go in fast. That's a problem. So what I do, I put a funnel into the end of the hose and fill the tank like that. The liquid flows in very quickly because the air rushes out of that little hole. There's nothing to impede it. Works great. That's the way to do it. After the first development, there is a wash of 10 minutes with running water. And what I do is I let the water pour into the tank through the hose and let the air and the water come out of the hole at the top of the tank. I put the thermometer in the end of the hose from the spigot. I adjust the temperature to 68. There is no stop bath. So once the film is developed and washed, it can sit in that tank for as long as you like until you do the bleach step. So that gives me time to mix the bleach. Two chemicals, part A and part B, and you mix the two of them together just before you do the bleach. So it's five grams of potassium dichromate, in water and then it's 10 milliliters of sulfuric acid so I guess you can mix the potassium dichromate and then add the acid and then you're ready to go. I want to mix a little more than a liter so this was a 30 gram supply of dichromate. I only need 5 grams in a liter and a little more in 200 so 5 grams plus one more maybe 6 grams in 1200 This is my bottle of sulfuric acid, one pint, 48%, and I think they call for 50%, so maybe I'll put a couple drops more. I've had this forever, I've never used it, hardly use it for anything. So I've got plenty of that. And how much do I need? I need 10 milliliters. All right, here's a nice measuring cup to measure the acid in. Holds 50 milliliters. So we'll use this. And the two liter. And that should help get me to make the bleach. I have a very small scale. And 
it's set to grams, I think. And put this on there. 33.85 grams. Set to zero. And then I put six grams of potassium dichromate into there. I may have to go back and forth a few times before I get it right. All right, I'm mixing the developer. I have 1,200 milliliters of water, distilled water. And I'm going to put that straight away into the coffee pot and store it in there. And then I will take the Fomodon and take 120 milliliters of it, put it in here, and dump it in the coffee pot and then rinse this out. All right, the developer is in the coffee pot with 1,200 milliliters of water. And it's right to that band that goes around and holds the handle. There's still half a bottle left, so I could do it again. And I rinsed out the beaker and dried the bottom of it. So I put 1,200 milliliters of water into the 2,000 milliliter beaker again. And to that, I will add the 6 grams of potassium dichromate and stir. Until it's totally dissolved. To that, I will add the sulfuric acid. All I'm going to need is 12 milliliters of sulfuric acid down here just above the first line. And I don't think I'm going to pour it into the little beaker and pour it into the dichromate until I'm ready to use it. So I have the developer in the coffee pot. And I have the dichromate in the big one. I'll put the film on there, then I could develop, rinse, bleach, rinse, clear, re-expose, redevelop. So I have to mix some clear. I have not put the acid in the little beaker yet. There's still a little bit of dichromium dust in it, and I'm I'm not going to wash it out, I'll let the acid wash it out. So I'll wait until I need to measure it out and put it into the bleach mix. The two large containers of liquids are put into a portable cooler and warm water is put into the cooler to bring them up to temperature. 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees C. It's quite cold in here now. I don't know exactly what the temperature is in here. About 55. So right now I'm quite a bit below it's on 60, it's supposed to go to 68, so I have to raise it up. So I'll put, you know, like 80 degree water or something in there. Then when it gets up to temperature, I'll take them out and replace the water with 68 or 70 degree water, and put them back in. The developer will be used again for the second development. The UPB1A tank was disassembled. The bottom spiral has a notch. This is a piece of old uh, exposed film I used to practice with. So 
So just before I try to load this in total darkness, I always practice again. The film is put into the groove with the large flange on the right, with the emulsion side facing in. It has to be pinched by that little notch. And it has to be pressed down. And I bring it out to the edge and I turn it counterclockwise so the emulsion is down. The emulsion is the side that's not shiny. It's the side that's tacky if your fingers are damp. And it's the side that's on the inside of the reel, on the inside of the film as it spirals. So I bring it to the edge and I hold it with the tip of my thumb. I put a little pinch on the end and I turn it face side up, emulsion side down when I go to put the lid on. Now I haven't moved my left hand yet and I tightened that nut just a little bit. Now all I do is I lift my thumb some so the emulsion is not scraping on the bottom spiral and I turn the whole unit clockwise. Alright, the film has been loaded into the tank and the top has been covered with a black cloth to keep light from getting into the water hole, just in case. I held the film like this, so I pinched it in like this, and I turned it this way and spooled it out. Now when it got close to the core, then it wouldn't spool out anymore, and I had to hold it like this. And then it spun in my fingers like that, holding the center. until it got to the end and then it flew out and a couple spirals come off and then I had to hold it again and, and re-wrap it and tuck it into the middle. So if you could really go slow at the end then it won't spring out like that. But it's a good idea to practice before you try to do that. The clearing agent was spooned out of the bottle and into a beaker. The clearing bath is potassium disulfite, 50 grams in 1,000 milliliters, so 60 grams in 1,200 milliliters. I'm not going to make the clearing bath until I'm finished washing the bleach out. Time for the development will be 10 minutes. So that's ready to go. All you do is click that and it starts to move. The text sheet says 9 to 10 minutes for development, 10 minutes to wash, 5 minutes to bleach, 5 minutes to wash, 3 minutes clearing bath and 5 minutes wash, second exposure. A word about exposure. You have to re-expose the film by holding it up to a light bulb. It's 30 seconds on a side, a foot away, something like that. Second exposure for a reversal bath. No, I'm not doing a reversal bath. The chemical's on there, but I'm going to use light. Okay, the water temperature is just about right now. It's been going up. And you see the temperature in the outside water is 84. I stir it. Check the temperature. At this point, I'm going to take the beakers out of here. As it turned out, the best way to adjust the temperature in here was to take the beakers out and pour cold water in until the temperature became 70 and then pour some out, put the beakers back in so they don't float. Now that has 70 degree water here and nothing in here. I'll put my shadow over and take the cloth off and then pour the developer in and start the timer. But first, I want to put my gloves on. They're inside out, hanging up to dry. They only cost a buck at the dollar store. 
This is the second development, and as you can see, the film is black. My agitation scheme is to turn it a quarter turn and jiggle it for five seconds every 15 seconds. That was based on the video I saw. But sometimes I go 30 seconds and then jiggle it five seconds. The jiggling is to get rid of bubbles. There's, you can see that the 1200 milliliters doesn't quite fill up the second spiral, but it certainly covers the first one. I'm warming up the photo flow in a milk jug. The film is washing after the development. Don't forget the fixer. I mixed it according to the directions and used just about my entire bottle of theosulfate. And it also has some of that potassium metabisulfate in it. Now I don't know what kind of fixer I'm supposed to use, so I followed the directions. That metabisulfite might actually clear the film a little more unlike other fixes on it. Wash, final wash is 30 minutes and I'm warming up the photo flow at the same time. The fixer was saved. Found an old bottle that was clean. It doesn't look clean, but it is clean inside. And I labeled it. Put a date on it. I, I labeled FOMA F100 Tech Fix. That's from the Tech Sheet Fixer. And then today's date, February 26, 2017. Well, I measured out one liter. And uh, after I put all those chemicals in, it was like 1,350 liters. There be pictures. The film is held onto the tines, whatever they are, by a clothespin on each end. On each end. The film was wiped with a paper towel behind it. I held it up on the slack end and wiped all the way across. Now all I do is spin it. I don't use a hair dryer or anything. I leave it on here for a good while. I cleaned up the other things. Put the photo flow away. This spins either way. If there's slack, it should evenly distribute itself among all the pieces. It will make bumps when it's totally dry, where these things are. So you really have to have some slack in there. But you don't want them to overlap. It takes an hour or so to dry. I don't crank it to dry. I just, I don't know, I just crank it. <laughs> but that's it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a cloth and get some Film Renew liquid. And uh, it's slightly oily. And what it does is it lubricates the film. After it's totally dry, I'll lubricate it. And then I will slit it. And if I use this slitter, I guess it's inside. There are different kinds of slitters. I'm going to just hold it on here and crank this thing. I'm going to let this hold the two pieces. I think that's the way I'll do it. After I lubricate it. I don't want to slit it before I do. 
because it, uh, if it's not bone dry, it'll be tacky, you know. So then I lubricate it and it'll be a little bit greasy and it'll slide through the slitter better. Slitter better. Better slitter. Alright, I slit the film while it was on this thing. That went fast. It was lubricated. Don't even ask me what ends up. Which ends up. I had to get an old reel of film from the 60s to figure out how to put it onto the thing. And basically it's emulsion side out picture upside down spooling off the top with the holes towards you and you would put it on the projector that way put it on the projector and lock it on this side now that may be wrong it might have to go on the other side I have to get a projector out All right, the smooth end is towards me. The sprocket holes are towards me. The emulsion side is out, and the pictures were upside down. So that's the way I made mine. I saved some old leader from Yale processing, and I put it on there, even though it's shrunk a little bit. I like loose places. These are bevel places.